Hi everyone, uh, this is Leanna Biddle, um, your Career Education Manager for the Warner College of Natural Resources. Um, today I'll be talking about a resume overview. So what is a resume? What are some of the different aspects of a resume? And what are some of the resources that are available to you in terms of resume development? Um, this is um, coinciding with WCNR Career Services, um, the Instagram takeover, if you will, of the Warner College itself. And we have taken over um, around career services topics on Tuesdays, which is awesome. And so for the month of July, we'll be talking about resume development, um, specifically talking about an overview, tailoring a resume towards a specific job and the federal resume um, development process, if you will. And so stay tuned, we'll have some great different uh, topics being presented. Um, first and foremost, I wanted to provide some different resources in terms of resume development and where you can find those resources. And so um, what you'll see in front of you, hopefully, is the um, Career Center website. Um, again, resources, if you click into this box right here, resource center it will take you to a hub of a lot of different resources available to you um, i'm going to talk specifically about resume today but i would highly recommend navigating the site to see what resources are available i know within the career services takeover for this tuesday um, some different resources will be highlighted and many of those are embedded within the resource center so a great resource for you as you look through um, so a great starting point is clicking on topics to your left going down to resume and from there you'll see a lot of different um, resources for you going through and so some that may be more beneficial than others and I'll talk through these after I do the general overview of a resume um, the action verbs for resumes and professional profiles so I'll talk a little bit about what an action verb is and how that will look in a resume um, but as you better understand what it is this resource will be so helpful as you're developing and further expanding your resume as you develop different experiences Going down, um, you may be asked to at some point develop a CV or curriculum um, vitae. Um, that's going to be a little bit different, but there are resources to help you shift your resume to a CV. Um, that's another conversation, but please know I'm happy to help in the development of a CV as you move forward. Going down, again, a lot of different resources that focus on resume development. Um, if you click into load more resources, you may even find that there are resumes within the resource center that are specific to your major in your um, industry area. So as you go down, you may see right here, environmental communication, a federal resume guide if you are interested in the federal government, a federal fish, wildlife, and conservation biology resume. Again, another resource you can use as you go through, natural resource management, and so forth. And so a lot of different resume guides, if you will, or sample resumes that might be helpful as you start to learn more about what a resume is, what are some of the ins and outs of it, and how you can put your best self forward as you develop your resume. And so what I'm going to do is go to this resume guide link. Um, on the top, if you were to click into, let me go back up quickly, go to the main Career Center site, Right here on the right hand corner, you'll see resumes. You can click into there and it will give you um, different samples as well. So a resume guide, if you click in, um, this will take you to the link I'm gonna click on here in a second. Industry examples by area, and even some CV and cover letter guides to help you in those uh, in that process essentially as you're applying to different opportunities. But again, I'm going to jump back to a resume guide just so we can take a look at it together and I can talk through what a resume is. And again, next week we'll talk about tailoring your resume as it relates to a specific job. So clicking in view document. Um, behind me, well, what you see here is a standard resume. And so um, one rule or one um, best practice I always like to share with students who I'm presenting to is having both a master resume and target resumes. And so a master resume is everything that you've done. And so what you see here um, is a standard resume, right? Your resume, I like to call it your story, your professional story of all the different things that you've done. Professional could include, as we go down, um, educational background. It could include relevant work experience. Maybe it's different extracurricular involvement. So this says leadership and community engagement. So again, um, your professional story as you start to think about applying to different jobs and opportunities. And it's always great to start the um, 
resume development, if you will, or draft resume early on rather than waiting just so that you have it. Let me quickly just zone in a little bit just so you can see this a little bit better. And so again, my philosophy going back is a master versus target resumes. Your master resume is everything that you've done. Right, and so it could be um, educational background, it could be your high school experience, it could be um, community college, any transfers, it could be your current educational status here at CSU. Um, it could be your relevant coursework, some of the coursework uh, courses, excuse me, that you've taken that you want to highlight, especially within your master resume, so you don't forget those experiences. It could be a one day volunteer opportunity that you think does this need to go on my target resume or a resume designed for a specific job? Maybe not, but on your master resume, you have it and it will stay there. Your master resume can be five pages long. Again, it's just a holder of information. As you start to apply to different opportunities, you can then develop a target resume. So essentially it's saving your master resume and then deleting all of those experiences that don't match a specific job you're applying to. So I'm moving slightly into tailoring your resume, but this is a good uh, practice or best practice as you move forward in developing a holistic resume. And so with all of that said, I would start with a master resume, one that you update, one that you keep, constantly adding different opportunities to it or different experiences. And then when you start to apply for opportunities, being intentional and thinking about, okay, what is going on my resume for this specific job? And let me be more intentional with the target resume. So very quickly, again, more of an overview of a resume. This is a great guide that really breaks down all the different bits and pieces of it. Um, I'll talk about your header, the importance of a header, um, professional summary and what that could look like. Education, again, educational background, what to include, some relevant work experience. I often get the question of, I don't have work experience, what do I put on my resume? Again, you can put relevant coursework, any volunteer opportunities that you've had. It could be extracurricular involvements through Colorado State University. And so again, thinking about how you can be strategic with your resume. So within a typical resume here at the top, you have your name, city, state, phone number, email, and then if you have a LinkedIn account. So LinkedIn is a professional website where you can essentially put in your credentials and make connections with different individuals, potentially alum from CSU. And so if you have a LinkedIn, you can definitely put in your URL, but it's not mandatory by any means. It's just an addition, if you will. Guest services qualifications. I'll talk a little bit more about this as I talk about tailoring your resume, um, but this is going to be a space where you can essentially highlight some of those uh, professional uh, highlights that you have that you want to share right at the top. It could correlate with the job and that's why it moves a little bit into tailoring your resume because you can change your professional summary or the qualification sections if you will. But you can be more intentional with what you're putting at the top of your resume. This is a section that's not mandatory by any means or not required or not what employers may be looking for directly. Um, I do believe that it will catch the eye of an employer as they're looking through and seeing um, what are some of those related qualifications that you may have towards the top. Next is education. Um, so putting in your education could be a concentration, any minors that you have, um, the degree that you're seeking or that you obtained, um, when, and then of course the university and city and state within there. I talked a little bit about action verbs, so I'll go back to that sheet just so you can see it once you have an idea. Um, but the bullet point formula, quote unquote, if you will, is action verb plus skill set plus results. So what you may see down here as you look at um, this individual's relevant work experience as a brand ambassador, they marketed brand at events, increasing brand awareness, and telling the story of this local company. So here you see the action verb, marketed, branded event, skill set is included in there, result, increasing brand awareness and telling the story of this local company. So again, it's a way to paint a picture for employers as they're looking through your resume and seeing what are some of the qualifications and how do those connect with some of the needs that they have. This then leans into any transferable skills that you see. So as you're developing a resume and looking at the qualifications of a job, looking at the responsibilities of a job, how are you developing your resume and how is it correlating between the two? So again, all good to think about some of those different pieces. 
Um, typically what I like to see it depends on the industry so that's a question I often get is how long does my resume need to be does it have to be just one page if so how do I squish everything in there um, some industry practices or um, standards that I've seen across the board federal resume can be as long as it needs to be I have seen a 14 page federal resume and that is totally fine that's just the standard within the federal government in terms of resume development more information is better State local, um, I would say typically I see two to three pages, more on the two range. Nonprofit private, one page to two pages. As you get more towards that business model, you'll see more of a one page resume. Um, but I always like to say kind of the standard for natural resources that I've seen is two pages. And so feel free to use some of that space. You may even apply to a job and they may say that they need a one page resume or two is completely fine. And so that's always a question you can ask if you just don't have full clarity on what that looks like. Perfect. Going down again, um, back to the bullet points. I like to see typically, um, depending on page, I like to see two to three, um, potentially four bullet points per opportunity. Again, it all is going to depend on the job itself as you think about tailoring your resume for that job. So always good to think about that. Leadership and community engagement. This could be extracurricular involvement. This could be leadership and skills. This could be technical skills. I mean, again, going back to that uh, best practice of creating a master resume, you can put all of that information in there and then take it off when you start uh, applying to different opportunities and creating target resumes. So good to put all of the different involvements that you've had within. Perfect. So this is a quick overview of a resume. Again, some of the, the more important sections that I see, sections being education, relevant work experience, some important sections include just those, a professional experience, additional work experience, any extracurricular involvements that you have, um, your header is gonna be important on the top because that has your contact information. Those are the most important. And then from there, you can add in other sections that might be pertinent to who you are, whether that be technical skills as they relate to the job, um, technical being uh, maybe data management, um, familiarity with software that you want to include, again, as it relates to the job, maybe field work experience, um, working with a chainsaw. Those are very specific, but again, technical skills that you have obtained um, throughout your time, even before CSU, but at CSU that you want to share. Um, let's see, any extracurricular involvements, again, additional that you want to showcase on your resume. Those are just a few that you could include, um, but you will have kind of those base sections that you'll want to make sure on your resume as it relates to the job itself. Going back to the, let me go up here, Resource Center, click in. Again, topics on the left, go down to resume. And then from there, now that you have an overview of a resume and what to include in that, these resources might be helpful. For example, action verbs for resumes and professional profiles. If you click in, you'll see here a list of different action verbs. So that's one aspect of a resume that may have you stumped as you're creating it is how can I change different action verbs to mean something similar but they're not the exact same. And so this does a great job of laying out communication skills versus data financial versus management. And again, picking, pick, uh, picking there we go, those action verbs that work best for you in the process. Going back, let's see another resource as I go down, I do want to highlight some resources for you, especially as they relate to natural resources. Load more. We'll click on fish wildlife. Oh, actually, I'm going to go back up. That's cover letter. Uh, federal fish wildlife. Again, federal is going to be longer and it's going to look a bit different. So please don't get any anxiety as it comes to this resume specifically. It does have more information on it. But again, it lays out some of those pieces we talked about education, university, city, state, Again, the degree at which you're pursuing or you obtained the degree or which degree you obtained, flipping that around a little bit. Uh, let's see different section titles. You may see a differentiation of section titles and we'll talk about that next week in terms of tailoring your resume. And then of course, going down relevant coursework. Again, this is gonna be longer because it's a federal resume. So if this um, feels 
um, a little anxiety inducing, that's probably why. It's just longer because it's federal, but don't worry too much about it. With that, I'm gonna go back. Um, please know that if you have any questions as you move forward in developing your resume and in trying to think through um, what fits you best as a human within your resume and as it relates to your uh, job interests and industry interests, please feel free to reach out. Um, I'm always happy to help and review your resume um, for each specific job or maybe a general overview just so that we can talk about you getting on um, the right track, if you will, and feeling most confident as you uh, start to apply for different opportunities. So thank you for listening. Thank you for taking the time to review this video, um, and I'm here to help. Thanks.